I don't believe it. Salutations, everybody. Welcome to Mothman Jones Movie Reviews. I am your host, John Maffio. Today's featured film is RoboCop, the reimagining of the 1980s cult classic. And this one stars, in the title role, Joel Kinnaman, along with Gary Oldman, Michael Keaton, Samuel Jackson, and Jay Bruichel. Obviously, the story has been updated for modern times and is more of a political social commentary going on but for the most part the story is the same we have a average everyday cop who is a family man and he has a partner and he gets fished out he gets fried his car alarm goes off right when he's about to have sex with his wife so you could basically call his sedan a cock blocker and the car explodes basically almost kills him murphy he's then signed up via consent forms by his wife to become the first sentinel robot cop and that's where we get our RoboCop movie. I love the result and conclusion of opinions that I come to with movies like this because for movies like this, I have no real judgment or opinions going into it, more like any movie, but especially for these. There's always skepticism, but I swear to you, everybody, I'm being genuine here. RoboCop, the reboot, is far, far more enjoyable than I expected it to be. It's a lot of fun, and it's actually a competently made movie. In some regards, it's a very flawed movie too, but it's actually a movie that I would maybe even buy on Blu-ray. I'm not even joking. Let's talk performances. First, we have Joel Kinnaman, who plays Alex Murphy himself, RoboCop. Now, I feel as though many actors could have stepped into this role and made it their own. Joel Kinnaman actually did a very convincing job here, and he did really good. I still feel, though, that a lot of people could have played this character. It's not a character that is becoming entitled to one person. Michael Keaton plays the villain, he's the corporate greedy monster that works for Omnicorp, and he's good, but the screenplay doesn't allow him to do more than he shows on screen. He's he's very one-dimensional, and he really, he's, he's comedically awesome in the role, but you, there's nothing memorable about his character. Everybody else does fine as well, but the two actors who really held their own and did something memorable to the extent with their roles were Samuel L. Jackson and Gary Oldman. Samuel L. Jackson plays this media swayer for the government, as so it seems, and he has such energy. Samuel L. Jackson, that's all I have to say, he brings this kinetic energy that you can't help but love. And Gary Oldman is always great in everything. He always has a way of bringing leverage and credibility to a film, unless it's Little Red Riding Hood. That's an exception. I am judging this film on its own merits, but a comparison is warranted and justified as well. The movie does follow, for the most part, beat for beat with the original film, but it does also take its unique spin on certain things in modern culture. But even though it does follow a conventional linear storyline that is predictable in some aspects, it's still a very competently made movie that's framed well, made well, and actually encompasses a lot of emotion, and that comes from Joel Kinnaman and the family aspect between him, his wife, and his son. Also, RoboCop himself aesthetically looks really cool, and they do throw in that little corporate Hollywood thing where they make him black, but it's done purposely. Um, you do get a little homage, though. You get a couple homages between some lines and the actual silver suit from the original movie that's in there for a good portion of time, believe it or not. Um, but he does look awesome, pragmatically speaking, and there's a lot of practical effects, believe it or not. When the CGI is there, it's, it blends well for the most part, but there are a couple scenes where the CGI looks something out of a Looney Tunes cartoon. He actually never quite gets to that level of over-the-top where you start to feel as though things aren't feasible or implausible. Uh, everything acts as it is in the realm of reality that this movie is set in. There is surprisingly gravitas and weight to the situation at hand. Another cool touch was the soundtrack. There were a lot of musical choices made in this movie that really surprised me between Frank Sinatra and the Tin Man song from Wizard of Oz. You know, I mean, I got a hand to the movie for being a little classy. Now I'm going to do something that I thought I was going to do more abundantly a couple hours ago. Criticize RoboCop. Um, the screenplay is lackluster and haphazardly constructed in terms of dialogue and story, but it's RoboCop, so it's okay. Um, the characters, for the most part, aren't memorable aside from a couple 
because the actors made the characters their own. And I also felt like the editing got a little clunky at times with the transitions between scenes because some, a couple scenes at least felt forced. Other than that, I have to say that Robocop was a pleasant surprise. It wasn't a great movie, wasn't all that memorable either, but it was a it was a blast, and I had a lot of fun watching it, and I would gladly watch it again when it comes out on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm gonna give it a full course Applebee's meal. It's a three out of five stars. I did not expect this, guys. I really didn't. I thought it was gonna be a piece of poop. Time to turn the tables. The pressure is on you. Have you seen the new RoboCop or the old one from the 80s? If you've seen both, let me know what you thought about both of them. Compare them if you want in the comments down below. Did you like the new one like I did, or were you feeling differently? Please like this video, subscribe to Mothman Jones so you'll never, ever, 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 ever miss a review from me ever again. Please check out Facebook, Twitter, and We Live Film in the info box too. I'm John Maffio, and y'all move, creep. See you next time. Mm -hmm.